Heavenly greetings, family of God, people of God all over the world, members of the household of faith, the universe of God, and all believers watching me. Today, we are talking to believers. The Lord give us grace today to share a short message followed by prayer. The scripture says that prayer changes us. Why do we pray? We pray because we believe in God. We pray because promises has been given to all believers. But those who pray in the name of Jesus, believing the Father, without doubting, they will have whatever they ask in the name of the Lord according to His will. We are here because God has no way to change us than His Word. Whatever we want from God must always be in line with His will. And His will is expressed by His Word. What are we here for? I'm going to take you straight to what the Bible says to every believer, to you and I, at this present moment where we live. I will take you to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Sometimes we read the scripture, we think we know the scripture. Knowing the scripture is one thing in our lives. We can say, wow, what a beautiful promise. Oh, nice message. It stops there. It does not make any difference if that word does not produce faith. The hearing of faith triggers God's response in our lives. James said, we have the mere listeners and the doers of the word. God always rewards the doers of the word. This means God is ready to meet you and I at the point of real movement by faith. The question is, we read the Bible, we've heard about the promises, you heard about messages, we say, oh, encouraging message. It does not go beyond encouragement for many people. It's not just words of encouragement, it's words of life. You say it is word of encouragement? Oh, it's beautiful, it's a nice prayer. Is that all for you? Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 24. Unless the seed fall into the ground and die, it can never produce fruit. The word we listen to, the word I read in the Bible, is the seed of the letter. But to be effective with life, it has to be planted in the right soil of your heart. As long as the word remains in our mind, in our intellect, yes, it's nice, yes. It sounds good. It's a good message but no life. Today, I'm going to read the scripture. And the question I will ask you after, is this scripture true for your life? I will ask you, are you only conditioned to believe that this is only true for others, not for me? Or it has only become history? It is only true for those who live in the time of Jesus when he came here. Jesus said one word, heaven and earth, will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Let me take you to the Bible once again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 17. This is a word that is preached everywhere. We have heard it times and times and times again. But does this word produce life in you? Are we pregnant of this word to bring life? He says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah. I repeat. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God is waiting for you and I at the point of his spirit. I'm going to read it and we, again. If you are in Christ, the scriptures say you are a new creation. Are you a new creation? What does it mean to be a new creation? Are you walking in newness of life? That's the question. It says, you are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things. Oh, not some. This is what the Word of God says. Number one, first, in Christ. What does this mean, in Christ? To be in Christ means, in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. Bible says we are grafted in Christ. This is a tree, everywhere a tree. Let me show you, this is a tree. He's dead. This tree is dead, no life. The branch look dead, but the root is not dead. There's life under. 
This is winter. Very soon at spring, you will see new life springing up from deep within. That is in Christ. Belief is our root in Christ. Our life comes from Christ. A Christian life comes from Jesus Christ. He says, because I live, you live. I we living in Christ. When you are in Christ, God's strength becomes your strength. God's way of thinking becomes your new way of thinking. If you are a new creation, we should stop thinking on the level of the old life. We should stop thinking negatively. We should stop speaking negatively and acting negatively. Now, if you are in Christ, means Christ's life becomes your life. We are made in our heart to be like Jesus. To be like him, a new creation, we must think like him, speak like him, walk by him, by his grace, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the giver of our life. The question now, how do you see yourself today? If you are a new creation, God has given you a new heart. That's what the scripture says, to be born again. Once God gave us a new heart, the work of the Holy Ghost started in our heart. Righteousness. But it does not stop there. After we receive a new heart, born again, God has to work further in our way of thinking. God has to work further in our mind. Our heart cannot control this hand without going through the mind. We exercise our will through the mind. We think all the time. We are thinking, thinking what to do, what next. So many thoughts crosses our mind. Some thoughts leads to nothing. But God's thought leads to life. Which one is directing your life? What do you think about yourself? What do you think about your life? What is God's point of view about your life? That's what you need to know. The scriptures say, if you are a new creation, all things have become new. The way you see life must change. The way you see yourself will change. The way you see others will change. You see yourself as one whom God has forgiven. Tell your past is over. So stop looking back to your past. Jesus never considered your past to determine your future. Do you see yourself the way the Lord sees you? Do you see others as people you are commanded to love, to help, to look at them through the perspective of Christ? When we see life the way Jesus sees it, you will see life clearly. We are a new creation. The question is, why do we keep looking at the past? Why do we keep turning to the past, looking back to the past? Those who fail you, the bad experience of the past. Yesterday is history. Jesus has come to close your history and to give a new history, to rewrite the history of your life. Go and read your Bible. It's a history changer. Christ has come to rewrite the history of our life. He has rewritten the history of my life. I'm not better than anybody. I came like everybody else from darkness, from trouble. Jesus met me and today give me a living hope. He gives me a living hope. The perspective, the way I see life has changed because Christ has opened my spirit to see myself the way God sees me and to see my fellow human beings the same way Jesus sees them. Why are we constantly looking back? Why? Because our mind is not renewed. You are a child of God. You have a new heart. But this mind needs to be renewed. Our mind needs to be renewed. It can only be renewed by the word of God. This is a trouble we have today. Failure to see life clearly. Failure to be what God wants you to be. To discover yourself comes because of the ignorance of this word. Because we fail to keep the word in the midst of our heart. Is this true for my life? Yes, it is true for my life. I'm a new creation. God no longer sees me as a sinner. He sees me as a child. God never sees me as a poor person. He sees me as a blessed person. If you doubt, let me take you to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. You have read this word. What does this word mean to you? Every blessing you receive today is a past tense blessing. God has done it already in the heavenly realms, in the spirit. That's the seed. But that blessing to become real and living in your life, you have a role to play. What is that role? Stop looking back. Stop holding offense. Stop looking at people in a bad light. 
Look to the future. Look to Jesus. Look at life from Christ's perspective. Those who had a real, real encounter with Jesus never looked back. So today, yesterday is history. What about tomorrow? Jesus has come to give you a tomorrow. You should look towards tomorrow. In tomorrow, there is a living hope. Tomorrow in Christ is bright. Tomorrow in Christ is joy. Tomorrow in Christ is victory. Tomorrow in Christ is love. The question is, how can I stop looking back? Can you see tomorrow? It is possible to see tomorrow through Christ. That's why the Bible says, in Him we live, in Him we move, and have my being. If I live in Christ, the past is over. Because Jesus never looked back. If I live in Christ, I live today. The question is, this scripture I just read to you, is it a new history? Or is it true for today? Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Let me tell you, no matter how bad your yesterday is, no matter how bad your past is, Jesus has come to cancel that past and give you a bright future. To stop look back, you need Jesus. To look at your future through Christ's perspective, you need Jesus. But you have a role to play. What is your role? What is my role? My role is now. This is now. Now. No step back. Now. I can't move without Jesus. Now. This word means the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is this word of God true for your life today? Did you believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? That's what Hebrews 13 verse 8 says. Now, I want you to focus on something. Stop looking back. Stop looking at the future in your own eyes, in your own perspective. Let God move future into you before you move into future. The only way to see future is Jesus to reveal you what the future holds for you. For him to do it, your role is now. You have to plant a seed now and you harvest tomorrow. No one can harvest without any seed being planted. And we plant now, 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 today, today. Jesus is the same today. The word of God is the same today. And you, the past is no longer your own. You can't go back to the past. The future is no longer your own. Only God sees the future. What is ours is now, 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 now. But the trouble we have today, we take journey into yesterday by thinking about yesterday. We take journey into a darkness because we don't know what the future holds. We want to see what happened tomorrow. God says, faith acts now. Faith believes now. Faith receives now. So the greatest change you need in your life is now. Stop looking back. Stop looking the future through the eyes of man and start looking at now. Now is opportunity. Opportunity for you. Opportunity. Today, many pass by opportunity of their lives. Why? Because their mind is sleeping. Their mind is in the past. Their mind is in the future. Jesus is saying, what do you want me to do for you now? God is speaking to us now through his word by his spirit. So we have knowledge of the scriptures, but we need to understand that this scripture is not a history, it is today. The moment we understand that this scripture and his promises are for today, then what happens next? Hope will rise in your heart. And when hope begins to arise in your heart through the light of understanding, you begin to say, ha, huh, this can be true for my life. If this man called Jesus is really alive, if he has changed the life of so many people who are desperate, there was a woman at the issue of blood who was in a desperate situation for 12 years without any solution. Some people were blind, no solution. Some people were in abject poverty, no solution. Some people were depressed, no solution. But the moment Jesus met them, the light of hope began to radiate in their heart. Their life changed. The way they thought changed. The way they lived changed. A radical transformation of their life that only Jesus can bring. I say today is opportunity. God is a God of now, if you are a believer. 
Jesus Christ is the Lord of now if you're a believer. The Holy Spirit is now if you're a believer. We believe now. We trust now. We act now. We live today, today, today. Jesus' transforming promise to us is freedom. Freedom in the way you think. Freedom in the way you talk. Freedom in the way we live to break all bandages in our lives. So are you ready for the change? The change will start from your spirit. The change will start from your heart, your focus. Right now, I'm asking you for a second. Stop looking back for a moment. Stop worrying about tomorrow for a second. Stop thinking at those who hurt you in the past. Give me your attention. Give your attention to the one who can bear all your burdens. He has borne them at the cross of Calvary, Jesus of Nazareth. Give me your focus. If you focus on Jesus Christ today, trusting and believing in your heart, you are what Jesus says you are. If you focus on him, his ability, trusting and believing he's alive, you will have what Jesus says you will have. And much more, you will do what Jesus says you can do. That's why we are here today. That Jesus has come to rewrite the history of your life. You cannot change your past, but Jesus can rewrite the history of your past today. We all know who Saul was notoriously, persecuting people, killing people. But the moment he met the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ, the focus of Paul changed forever. Saul turned to Paul. He began to see life through the perspective of Jesus. Those whom he once saw as enemy became friend. Those whom he used to reject before, he rejected them no more. His life changed forever. His focus changed forever. Jesus has come to bring a radical transformation in our life. That change starts in our heart, in our focus today. So today, allow him to rewrite the history of your life. Allow him to close the chapter of your past and to bring a new chapter in your life. Allow him to reset the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act. Allow him to remove the burden that is upon your soul today. Allow him, oh my Lord, the one who will never forsake you, who will never abandon you. Even the whole world turn against you. Even the whole world abandon you. And you are in four walls in your room and apartment. Jesus is seeing you. That's why he cares for you. Jesus cares because Jesus sees. Do you believe that the Lord is seeing you? Do you believe that someone is watching you in your isolation? Do you believe where there is no human help, the great helper is by your side? Do you believe that God's hand is not short to reach out where you are today? Do you believe Jesus can put an end to your trouble? Do you believe Jesus can change the way you think today? Do you believe your life can change today? I believe, that's why I speak. I believe, that's why I pray. I'm telling you, allow Jesus to rewrite the history of your life. And today, you will step faith. Today, you will plant the seed of faith. Today, you will act faith. And the acting faith will rewrite the history of your life and bring the future, the good future to your life. What you do today in Christ Jesus can rewrite the history of your past and bring the good future God has for you. What seed do you have to plant now? Just believe. Open your heart. Right now, we are here to pray for you for a new season in your life a new season, a new hope, a new perspective in the name of Jesus. Allow Jesus to change your life. Allow him to touch your life. Allow him to enhance your life. Allow him to give you strength, to discover yourself, to discover God's potential in your life. And stop focusing on man. Stop focusing on people. Stop focusing on your trouble and focus on the one who can help you today. That is Jesus. That's why we pray. We're about to pray for you for the Lord to rewrite the history of your life. Today, we are going to pray for something new to begin to happen in your life today. Every day has its own destiny, each day. Each day has its own destiny. No matter what you achieve in the past, there's always something greater heights in ahead of you. Do you believe that? Today, open your heart. Set your focus on Jesus Christ. As the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, we are going to pray today. We are going to pray to God the Father in the heavenly realms. 
We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By praying for you, we are setting you aside for the special attention of God. Not we. We have no power to heal anybody, to deliver anybody. But we are called to pray for you. If you believe, focus your heart on Jesus Christ. Trusting and believing that Jesus is alive. He cares for you. Give him the opportunity to visit you personally, wherever you are. Just believe and you'll begin to see things around you begin to change because of him, not because of me. By praying in the name of Jesus, any person who watches this program with a believing heart, any person who watches this program and listens to my voice, I ask you to set your focus on Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the Alpha, He's the Omega, He's the foundation, the perfecter of our faith. When you pray and you believe, we are setting you aside for the intention of the Holy Spirit who will come and visit you and do what no human being can do in your life. He is the comforter, the comfort of our soul. When he comes, the weight upon your soul will vanish like a cloud. When he comes, he puts a smile in your heart. When he comes, he will give you the peace of Jesus. When he comes, you will discover life is worth living. That's my word to you. Life is worth living. If you look at life in the perspective of doom or fear, you say, oh, there's nothing good. But change that perspective. Life is worth living in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, because of Jesus, I'm full of joy because of tomorrow, because of Christ. Because of Jesus, the best is yet to come. Because of Jesus, I love everybody. Because of Jesus, oh my Lord, I look at God's potential in my life. Every day I woke up, I say, Lord, what are you going to do today? Something new happened. Something new in Christ. I begin to look at life through Christ. Look at human beings through Christ. Even those who offend you, see them through Christ and you will forgive and move on. Nothing should hold you back. Because Jesus has something for you better than you think. Are you ready? Change your focus for a moment. For a moment, fix your eyes on the one who bore all our burdens at the cross of Calvary, that is Jesus. If you believe, sky will be your limit. If you believe, Jesus will give you something he promised, the peace of heart. In John chapter 14, verse 27, he says, peace I give you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives. What you need today is peace. What caused you to look back is lack of peace. If you have peace, you're contented. If you have the peace of heart, you will begin to think properly. You will begin to reason properly. If you have peace, nothing, absolutely nothing, will be a veil between you and Christ. Hope, substance, evidence. These are the step of faith. The day you begin to realize that this word of God is true for you today. The way the Holy Ghost opened your heart to understand the promises of God in this Holy Bible. The day you allow him to bring the reality of the promises, to bring spiritual understanding, to bring conviction in your heart that this is true for you now, your life will change. The woman of the issue of blood heard there is a man called Jesus. She heard the report of the signs and wonders Jesus was performing. When she heard it, who opened her heart to understand that those miracles were true? I believe it was the Holy Spirit. Who opened her heart to understand that these signs and wonders were for her also? Who convicted her of the reality of those things for her life? I believe the Holy Spirit did. It is Him who opened our eyes to the promises of God. It is the Holy Ghost who opens our eyes to see the promises in the Holy Bible. It is the Holy Ghost that leads you to spiritual understanding. And that understanding will bring hope. You have a reason to believe. It is true. Then he will lead you to believe that that hope is also true for your life. That is conviction. Once you have conviction, the victory is yours. So, you can't change your past. But with Jesus' help, you can rewrite your past. Saul said, I'm serving God with a pure conscience. (laughs) He never looked back. He knew he was a new creation. He knew that God has become his father. His past is over. That God never reminded him his past. Stop listening to the devil, who won't always to point you to your past, but begin to look at Jesus' perspective to the future God has given you today. Are you ready for a change, 
for the transforming power of Christ, which is freedom, liberation of your thinking, liberation of the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act. Do you believe the Lord can open a new perspective for you? I believe. That's why I pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, It is written, I believe, therefore I speak. Today, with the same spirit of faith, we believe today and pray today. Act faith today in the name of Jesus. Reset your mind on today. Reset your heart on Christ. Reset your belief in Him. And right now, begin to open your heart. Ask Him deep inside of you. Bring all your trouble to Jesus. Speak to Him in your heart. Ask Him to come and do what no man can do. Just trust and believe in the name of Jesus. Whatever word that comes for our life, whatever word that comes to our mouth, it was a prayer, words of blessing, words of faith. Receive it. Ask Jesus to make it a reality in your life. Act on it in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I am speaking to believers. I'm speaking to your heart. Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are those who believe. Do you believe? Your heart believes that Jesus can do it for you today? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now in the foundation. That change starts in you, in your heart. I want the change to start in your heart right now, in the name of Jesus. I pray that burden, that veil that has been clouding your heart to see the reality of God's promises. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that veil be taken away in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the freedom of your heart right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever stronghold of the devil clouding your heart with pain, with despair, that veil be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I say be removed in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the light. Let your light dispel that darkness in the heart. Remove that veil, Lord. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 15 to 17, whoever turns his heart to Jesus, the veil is taken away. Lord Jesus, let the veil of pain be removed in the name of Jesus. The veil of doubt be removed in the name of Jesus. The veil of fear be removed in the name of Jesus. The veil of depression be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be removed, be removed, be removed, be removed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the light of revelation begin to shine in your heart. The light of revelation of a new hope in Christ Jesus of a new perspective in Christ Jesus. You begin to see things from eternity's perspective. You begin to look at yourself from eternity's perspective. You stop condemning yourself. Stop condemning yourself. Stop condemning yourself. Jesus never condemned you. That veil of condemnation, be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to your heart that Jesus is alive. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that darkness be dispelled. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, whatever weight upon your soul, that weight be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, let the Holy Ghost fall, descend on each one listening, affect their words with life. Holy Spirit, enter that house, enter their lives, enter their lives, enter their heart, open their heart, open their heart to receive this word. Open their heart to receive your message. Open their heart to understand the Bible. Open their heart to the promises of heaven in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, fill them with the spirit of revelation. Revelation of your way. Revelation of your word. Revelation of the hidden life in the scriptures in the name of Jesus. Grant them understanding heart, discerning heart, discerning spirit to see the promise of heaven, the promise of God. Lead them, Holy Ghost, to understand, to understand, spiritual understanding that the promise is true for their life. Lead them to conviction of faith. Lead them to conviction to apply the word rightfully in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray today for a new dawn in your life. A new dawn, a new dawn, a new dawn in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not words of persuasion, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, let your light begin to dawn in their hearts. 
begin to dawn in their hearts. Let them begin to receive that peace, the uncommon peace of Christ, the peace of heart, the peace of mind, the peace of conscience, the peace of heart, the peace of mind, the peace of conscience. I pray for the uncommon peace of Christ to begin to fill their heart, to fill their mind, to fill their conscience with the light of life, with the light of hope, living hope, living faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be light in their hearts, O Lord. Let there be light in their conscience, O Lord. Let there be light in their mind. Let their heart be enlightened by spiritual enlightenment. Let their heart be enlightened by spiritual understanding, discerning spirit. Let their mind be renewed, O Lord. Let the mind be renewed. This is the stronghold we have to remove today. Brethren, many of us three, as Paul was speaking to the Galatians, we have a new heart. We are children of God, but we begin to live like slaves. We begin to condemn ourselves because we fail to renew our mind, to think as God wants us to think. Jesus said to Peter, you think like man think, not as God thinks. We need to put on the new man. That is our responsibility. The change of our mind, the change of our thought must come by the word of God. Read this word. Meditate it. Ask for spiritual understanding to believe the promises. Allow the Holy Ghost to bring spiritual understanding of these promises in your life. Allow him to take you to conviction. It is true for your life. Allow him to build faith in you. Faith is a gift from God. Allow him to move you to act faith in his name, Jesus. And your life will be the same. Let our thinking be changed. Put on the new man by the renewal of our thinking. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will enlighten our mind with the light of knowledge of eternal things. He will open your heart to understand from deep in your heart the reality of the promises of God. And then you will begin to apply this word in your life. The day you begin to realize, the day you begin to understand that this word is God speaking to you now, and you believe God is seeing you now. God answers now. You apply it by faith now and begin to change the way you speak. Pray the word of faith. Speak the word of life. In the midst of poverty, God said, He will provide all my needs in Christ Jesus. Speak the word of faith in the sight of God. Speak the word of life in the midst of circumstances. Speak what is positive. Think positively. Talk positively. Act positively. Rely on God's ability in your life. What you are asking for has already been provided. But you have to believe that human being cannot do it for you. But Jesus can do it for you in the power of the Holy Spirit. His faith is abstract. It cannot bring any result. Faith is practical. Faith is a demonstration. Faith is a conviction. If you believe it is true for your life, begin to speak the word of life. Begin to confess. Begin to speak. Jesus is my healer, my deliverer, my savior. Begin to speak words of life. Begin to prophesy to your life. Begin to speak positive in the midst of your trouble. Speak the word of faith and God will make it good. This word cannot work by itself. You have to make it work. The promises cannot work by themselves. You make them work. How do you make it work? By believing, trusting and speaking the word of faith. Allow God to make it work in your life. I'm praying today in the name of Jesus for a new dawn in your life. In every area of your life, in the name of Jesus, let the light of God begin to shine in your home, in your career, in your marriage, in your life, in your perspective, in your future. Let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light light in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to speak to any trouble in your life. Say the way out for me has come. I say the way out for you has come. I say breakthrough has come. Breakthrough has come. A new way of thinking has come. A new way of speaking has come. A new way of acting has come. A new way. A new way. Say, I believe God's agenda for my life. I believe God's time is now. Father, I speak now the word of faith. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. Lord Jesus, make it happen. Make it happen. Your transforming power bring liberation spiritually. Liberation emotionally. Liberation physically. Liberation. 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 Liberation in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. I say a new dawn has come to your life today in the name of Jesus Christ. I say God's blessing come to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I say your past is over in the name of Jesus Christ. I say your heart be opened to the living word of the Bible in the name of Jesus. 
I speak faith to your life. Faith, faith, faith. With the faith in the name of Jesus. With the faith that changed your life. With a new dawn, a new dawn, a new testimony. A new testimony has come for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord be with your spirit in Jesus' name. Now you have heard the word of faith. I want to take you back just in conclusion. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 about prophet Elijah. The scripture says there was a time of famine, a very difficult and severe famine. Prophet Elijah came to a town called Zarephath and met a widow there. When Elijah came, God instructed Elijah to go to the widow of Zarephath. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 9. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. I have commanded a widow <laughs> there to provide for you. God said to Elijah, I commanded that widow to feed you. So Elijah arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. I have only a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. That was the last provision she had in her life. What can be more desperate than this situation? To prepare for her last meal before leaving the earth. That's what she said because she was overwhelmed, there was no solution. But she met a man called Elijah, a prophet, led by God. God said to Elijah, I've commanded this woman to feed you. Why I'm reading this verse to you? You think you are poor and you don't know you are rich. You think you have nothing and you don't know you have something. Oh my God. God say, I command the widow to feed Elijah. The woman say, I have a little flour, a little after we eat it, it is finished. You don't know what God has put in your life. Stop stifling your life. Stop destroying God's potential in your life. Remove that veil and see clearly what, how God sees you. Elijah never saw her as a poor widow. God never saw her as a lacking person. He commanded his prophet to go there and that woman will feed her. How can somebody who has nothing can feed a prophet? The woman said, I will prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat and die. Now Elijah said to her, do not fear. <laughs> I say to you, stop fearing. Stop doubting. Stop fearing in the name of Jesus Christ. Elijah said, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and for your son. For thus saith the Lord, this is my word. This is what God said to her. What God said to you is more important than your limitation. What God said to you override your limitation. You have opened your mouth to pronounce words of limitation for your life. Today, God's word expands the scope of your action in life in the name of Jesus. You should see yourself the way God sees you in reality, beyond the veil of ignorance. Elijah said, the bin of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain to your life. I say, you will never lack in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never despair in the name of Jesus Christ. God's provision will always meet you at the point of essential need in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. Who told you you are a poor person? Who told you you are useless? Who told you you have no future? Who told you the end has come? Who told you that you have no future for you? I say there is future for you in the name of Jesus. I say you are blessed in the name of Jesus. I say you have a living hope in the name of Jesus. I say you are free in the name of Jesus. I say the best is yet to come for your life in the name of Jesus. There is a hope, there is life, there is salvation and God's blessing for your life and breakthrough and your past is over in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life, I speak breakthrough to your life to your home, 
to your family, to your finances, to every area of life, I speak life in the name of Jesus. I say, as the Bible says, my God shall provide all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, believe it, receive it, and act on it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.